I'm Shanae. Thank you so much for tuning in to Shanae's Law. This is another foot video. You've probably read the title by the time you've seen the thumbnail that I'm going to create and make it fly for you to click on. Anywho, yes, so if you're familiar with me, familiar with my reconstructive foot surgery slash bunionectomy playlist here on my channel, then you know I've had a few foot issues. And if you've watched the video that I post before this, then you're going to see that I am getting my left foot fixed next month. It's going to be in the month of October. I don't have the date yet. I do get it on Monday. So I'm very excited about that. But I wanted to talk to you all today about some of the things that I'm telling you all. Not, not everything's on YouTube. Some important things to consider for the person that's taking you to the surgery. Now, this is a surgery that you can't be out here rolling around these streets thinking you cute and living the best life possible because you can't even walk. Some people might be able to walk. It depends on what type of incision they do, what type of surgery. But for the most part, you will be either A, on crutches, or B, on a knee scooter. So, it's important things for you to consider about the person that's going to be responsible for you during this process uh, dirt, basically during before and after because somebody got to take you there somebody got to take you home and hopefully somebody's going to be assisting you with the recovery at least for the first week so let's jump in so uh this video is going to be basically uh by your surgery prep advice for the person taking you so number one they need to be aware of the procedure they need to know what the surgery is what's being done and they need to know why they also need to know the risk of the surgery and any appropriate measures that are going to be necessary upon the release of you at that outpatient facility. And they also need to be aware of what to expect after the surgery because remind you, you're going to be in their care, you're going to be getting in their car, and they're going to be taking you home. So these things are important. Two, you definitely want to make sure that this person is reliable and dependable. You want to know that this person can be counted on, that they are trustworthy, uh, that they're going to stick around during the entire process before, during, and after. They're not going to leave and go to McDonald's and then the doctor got to talk to them. They're going to be there for you. And you want somebody that's going to arrive on time and avoid being late for this surgery. And somebody that's actually going to watch your clothing and your purse. Because don't forget, when you get there, they make you strip down and get buddy. <laughs> they make you get completely naked. And they put all of your, they do give you a bag. You put all of your belongings in the bag. So this person has to watch your purse, your clothing, your shoes, basically all of your belongings. And you want to make sure this person is not going to leave you, leave with your stuff, sell your stuff. You want to make sure that this person has your back and they won't rob you too. You got to make sure they won't do that. It might sound crazy, but listen, we live in a crazy world. You can never be too safe. Number three. Make sure that this person, or if you're the person, make sure that you bring a bag of essentials to keep you occupied during the surgery and during that long lobby wait, because I think my last surgery was allegedly around five hours, and I know my family really wasn't expecting that. So uh, make sure that they have snacks to fight against the hunger while they're waiting on you in the lobby, or, and, or maybe some money too, money on hand for um, a meal from the cafeteria, whatever that situation is at the outpatient facility. Entertainment to pass the time and to prevent boredom and anxiety. Make sure they got something to do. I mean, you also wanna make sure you have charges for all of your electronic devices. Cause let's face it, you don't need your charger. You're probably gonna be there a long time. We don't know what other surgeries is going on. We don't know what the situation is. So make sure like if you're the person bringing them or if the person bringing you, make sure that they got a little bad. They got some, um, something to pass time. They have their charges for the iPad, the cell phone, the iPod, the laptop, whatever they're bringing, bring the chargers. Number four, make sure that this person knows the location of the actual outpatient facility. Make sure that they have the address prior to the surgery date and they have it stored in their GPS if necessary. Now, if they got to find the area of the, the facility days before, just to get an idea and a feel to just know where it is, then they should do that. That's going to prevent y'all getting lost on the day of and being late. You don't want the extra stress. You want to get in, get out, get it over with. You want to be comfortable. You want to go home and you want to eat. So make sure they have an idea. If they're not familiar, make sure they get familiar way before. 
This is also going to make sure that you do arrive on time. And with the proper planning, you should not be late if you all work it out. This is why this person has to be reliable and they got to take it seriously too. Number five, this person needs to have a reliable car. Now, you know, unless y'all are doing Uber and Lyft, but by doctor's orders, you know, you won't be able to drive. You're going to be under anesthesia. You're going to be under a painkiller. You are not going to have full mobility and full motor skills. You're going to be a little, you know, a little high. So if even if that person doesn't have a reliable car, make sure that they are taking care of you in and out of that Uber or that Lyft. But if they do have a car, make sure it's reliable. Make sure that they... <laughs> that they've been preventing breakdowns because you don't want to break down to the hospital or after the hospital and make sure that they've been getting that proper maintenance on that car, the oil changes. Make sure there's gas in a car. I know it sounds simple, but you will be amazed at what happens to people when they're ill-prepared, when they don't take things seriously. And, you know, number six, this person has to be patient with you. They got to be patient. We don't know how some people are under anesthesia or under <laughs> painkillers or I hell, I don't know. It could be morphine. Who knows? They got to be patient with you. They got to be patient with the procedure, patient with the wait time. Yes, you're not in the lobby waiting, but you are the one being operated on. So it's not fun and games for you either. So this person needs to be considerate and pa uh, patient. Hopefully it is a, a loved one or a friend, a, a family member, someone that has that compassion and that can, you know, uh, be pa uh, patient and gentle with you. Okay. Seven, make sure that if your doctor did not already give you any prescriptions, including your painkiller or stool softener or nausea pill, whatever, uh, ha let this person know that as well so they can be prepared to take you to the pharmacy if need be. Hopefully you all have a really great doctor like Dr. B. Hey, Dr. B. Anyway, if you have a great doctor, they're going to do that prior to. So that allows you to have more control. But if they don't, let this person know, hey, when we leave the surgery, I do need to swing by CVS real quick and get my stuff. And, you know, you might have to run in and get it. This is my CVS card, my insurance card, whatever, you know, and tell, you know, you might have to go handle that. You might have to go through the drive through at the CVS. Who knows? But let them know, you know, let them know what to expect, what to do. And so they can be prepared because, you know, and on a scale, they're doing you a favor by even being there and taking you. So let this person know they got to go to the pharmacy or to the store. Hopefully you've already been to the store. Cause you need to stock up on uh, essentials and food and things way before your surgery. But let them know if y'all got to go to that daggone pharmacy or anywhere else real quick. Okay. And that's going to conclude it. That's going to be the top things that this person is taking you to the surgery needs to know. That's going to prevent surprises. It's going to allow you to be there on time and to leave on time without the minimal stress as possible. So thank you so much for watching. I hope these tips have sparked a bug in you. Or if you're going to take the person, I hope now you're a little bit more aware of what your role is going to be, why this person is getting operated on in the back. I am Shanae. Make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. Share this video. Anybody that's about to have foot surgery, please share this video. It's very imperative for people to know what's really going on because some of these videos on YouTube and Facebook don't tell you the real deal, okay? Share the video, get the knowledge out, take care of yourselves, prevent from having to have foot surgery anyway at these jobs. I'll see you all next time. Thank you so much for watching. And until then, protect your energy.